bird. A very funny joker. He's a bird. But when he jokes, my honey, he's a dog. His joking ain't so funny. What a dog. Johnny is a joker that's a trying to steal my baby. He's a bird dog. Johnny sings a love song. He's a bird. He sings the sweetest love song you ever heard. But when he sings to my gal, what a howl. To me, he's just a wolf dog on the ground. Johnny wants to fly away. I sent you the questions here. Did you ever look at them? Nobody ever I does. Did. You know. I did. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, I did. <laughs> yeah, most people just like, oh, I don't know, you know, so, you know, musicians, you know. So, uh, when did you play play your first real gig? When little Rachel was? Well, real gig meaning like I got a little bit of compensation for it. Yes. Yeah. That. Well, I had um, across the street from the north side, which is now Jilly's Music Room, there was a little place, a little coffee place that opened up called Jack's um, Coffee and Plants. And somehow somebody heard me at an open mic night and they said, why don't you come down here and play at Jack's Coffee and Plants? And Jack actually, I believe he owns the Akron Glass Works, um, but he moved from coffee and plants into making beautiful pieces of glass. A anyway, so I went in there and um, had my first gig. It was just about an hour long because I really didn't have that much material that I had ready yet. And um, I invited all of my friends at the time. I believe I was 19. So that was kind of the the very first one that I had. And then I really got into it and I decided, you know, I better check out more venues. So I went to the Book Delight, which was the University of Akron's newspaper, still is. And I said, hey, I want to do a column about, you know, music and venues. And so they let me do a column called Here and Now. And I ended up meeting a lot of musicians that way and getting kind of into the scene that way. What's the worst part of playing live? Oh my. I mean every everything is is wonder is normally wonderful. I love playing live. Agreed. I, I would say uh, there are many things that can go wrong. You have to be prepared to be um improv moment. I mean between breaking a string to your cable giving out um to you know crying babies that you're like is it too loud or <laughs> i've just had a lot of um i mean because you can't necessarily especially as a singer songwriter solo performer you can't always do a sound check for yourself yeah, and I so hate you that don't, too. don't yeah. know if it's too loud if it's too soft and you know you're trying to ask somebody around you know hey is it too loud and they're like no no it's fine and then someone comes up to you later it's like it's too loud I'm sorry, I just yeah. Didn't... <laughs> very rarely do we get balled out for being too quiet. Yes, yes. You're just too quiet. You're too. Can quiet. you bring the sucker up? 
um, I did want to add, I did want to add one more thing to that little <laughs> thing is that, you know, now it's become this, this big joke about free bird, but I mean, I swear if I had a dollar for every time I heard that at a gig free bird, best thing is, um, it just fills up my soul. I, I feel like I come to life when I'm playing music and I can tell that that is, it exudes past myself into an area that has to do with the energy we are all sharing together, the place, the moment, the atmosphere, the, um, you know, enjoyment of life in general. And I get to share that with people. And that, that truly is something really special for me. And I, I often feel like it's not just me that's singing, but it's, you know, the other characters that are in the room that I get to experience my joy with. So that's what is the best part for me. You get paid I also too. love, <laughs> and you get paid, you get paid. There's a little bit of this. Love. We got a little bit of this We're in here. My yeah. soul. Yeah. <laughs> my soul's even I, better when the check comes. This is really nice, you know. No, I'm, you know. I can eat tonight. Yes. I know. Pizza. <laughs> I also love playing with other people. I think that that's something that's special. There's like a, a communication that, that musicians have between each other in a band that is such a special bond that is just not talking, but telecommunication of some sort or telepathy. It is. In fact, have you ever been play on stage? You got four other players working with you. You're singing and you forget the lyrics. You look at the bass player and you go, where are we? Says, I don't know. Everybody freezes up at the same time. <laughs> Once you forget the lyrics, everybody on stage doesn't know where the hell they are on the song. Do you still have anxiety when you get on stage? Or did you ever, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, that will never go away. That's one of those things that, you know, unless I'm, I used to play at a place called Uncorked Wine Bar, which isn't there anymore. But Because of you? Yeah, I destroyed it. What did you do it. to that I, place? What did you do? <laughs> I played there one too many times. They said, Rachel, we don't have any wine left. It's all your fault. <laughs> um, I I uh, played there every Monday, and it be, kind of became like my living room. And so for there, oh. there wasn't really much anxiety. It was much more like, I'm just practicing and trying out these different tunes let me know what you think of them. So there, I didn't have as much anxiety as I did. I were just, you know, a bunch of friends in, in the living room. There would be, you know, 15 of us or something like that because it was this kind of small area. And then, but for bigger shows, uh, you know, the nervousness, I can't eat, um, you know, yeah. I don't want to have any like sparkling water because that's that could make you burp. I mean, you just don't that kind of feeling of it, true. but, <laughs> but the anticipation of it is some of the best, you know, that's what gets your adrenaline going. So by the time you get out there and then you start and you can just let it all out, that's when you're like, who this feels good. You're going down the roller coaster. You know, it's the, the chugging up the roller coaster. That's the most, you know, anxious, <laughs> you know, Henry, I, the very first solo that I had, like big solo, I was in fifth grade and um, I was supposed to play the scarecrow. So I was going to sing the scarecrow's part in The Wizard of Oz. And it's like, if I only had a brain. Well, they told me only about nine days before I was going to be performing this. You know, I'm 10 years old. Oh, no, you're not supposed to be the scarecrow. You're supposed to be the lion. And I was like, what and it's if i only had the nerve so i'm sitting there you know i've i've been practicing the words over and over again and now i've got to change the words and so i get up there and i'm the cowardly lion and you know what i mean two thousand people it was the may festival in akron wow. so it was you know the elementary school and the middle schools and i get up there to sing it and halfway through i forget the words and so I had to hum. So I just hummed through it <laughs> until I could remember what the words were again. And then, you know, I finally could come back in. But I would say that that was the most embarrassing thing wow. that ever happened to me. And it well, was the a 10 year old, you know, that's harsh. <laughs> it, but from that day forward, I thought, 
well, it can't get any worse than that. <laughs> so I might as well just keep doing this thing that I like to do. <laughs> so agreed. Agreed. Yeah. So um tell me about babies in black. How are you guys doing? Oh, we're doing great. You know, we just um played a retirement show, retirement community show, and it was super fun because everybody knew all the words and because we play 50s and 60s music um right beatles and everly brothers and leslie gore and the drifters and the coasters and the you know you name it the searchers anything that ends with ers <laughs> <laughs> um, we, the ronettes we, we try to to keep that up because it's um for two people based in a guitar um and two female voices we arrange everything ourselves and that's um can be challenging uh with like band material but in the 50s and 60s there were a lot of uh, kind of two-part harmonies that made it a little easier for us to to work with um but we'd like to you know juice up the set lists you know after you've played for three hours at several different places you're like we need some new material we need um to, to i'm always on. adding stuff yeah I, I add stuff all the time i just added hit me baby one more time yes i'm fearless i'm fearless i do i do let it go from frozen yeah i tell you what i i got into a weird i won't say weird situation but um for for some reason some people thought that i could teach little children music and so now i'm teaching preschool through fifth grade um music lessons at, at the uh at the elms and they love let it go <laughs> they are good i'm glad somebody let it likes go. it that you was a hard song to learn it. it's yeah disney stuff's pretty difficult you know Definitely. so i was I was really pleased that I can do that. And it, they still love it. I still get it, you know, a lot of applause. So where are you guys playing at or tentatively, you know, because you're ready to book next year? Yeah, we are playing at um, a place called the Eastland Inn in Berea. And actually, you can look us up, um, thebabiesinblack.com. But I'm sure that we will um, be at the Beatles Festival in February in Kent. That's probably where you'll see us next. Well, thank you so much. And we hope I hope to see you soon. Stay in touch now. Definitely. Thank you so much, Henry. I'm so excited that Random Acts of Music is back. 2.0, baby. <laughs> We're back. <Yes. laughs> All right. I'm just going to stop the recording now.
I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Growing up in Wellington, Ohio, I took piano lessons as a kid from about the fourth grade on. Uh, played clarinet in the high school band. So music was always an important part of my life growing up. I, I, I went on to college at Bowling Green State University, studied music education, and uh, moved to Mansfield in 1974. To, uh, I was hired to teach music at, uh, in the Mansfield City Schools. Uh, while I was here, I, I had the opportunity to play in a lot of different bands in the area. Uh, played hundreds of wedding receptions and corporate events, a lot of VFWs and things like that. Uh, I got involved with the Musicians Union, and because of that, I got called to do a lot of shows. 
at the uh, Renaissance Theater and played uh, saxophone in bands to back up such artists as Cab Calloway, Fifth Dimension, Rosemary Clooney, Bobby Vinton, and, 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 uh, and others. Uh, started playing solo, I guess probably uh, 15 years ago, and found out that that was a lot of fun and uh, been doing solo much, much of the time. You know, my influences are uh, probably a whole lot of them, but I would narrow it down to Ludwig von Beethoven, Billy Joel, and Bill Evans. Classical, pop, and, and jazz. Those are my, my great areas of interest and, and, and a lot of the influences. Influenced a lot by the Beatles, of course, and a lot of the popular songwriters of the 60s and 70s. And I love the great American songbook. I love doing songs written by Gershwin, Cole Porter, Jerome Kern, and, and those songs from that era. You know, I think there's probably no bigger thrill than setting up your equipment and being in front of a live audience and just performing. You know, you've, you've practiced, you've got tons of money invested in your equipment, and it all boils down to that opportunity to, to be in front of a live audience. I love to see audience reaction to what I'm doing. I play to the audience, I talk to the audience, especially when I'm playing in wineries or bars or, or places like that. I love to play requests, and I just love to see, you know, the looks on people when I play music that they really enjoy. I do primarily 60s, 70s, as well as uh, jazz, the Great American Songbook. And you know, it's really f refreshing to me when I have like a 25 to 30 year old girl who will request Sinatra or Billy Joel. And it just, it's just, it's encouraging that some of the great music is still alive here with the younger folks. I feel really fortunate to play a lot in the area. Uh, I play a lot in the local venues in Mansfield area. I have played as far west as Las Vegas, as far north as the islands of Putin Bay. Um, I have a website, stevebrownsmusic.com, where you can find my schedule, some other information, and a lot of YouTube videos are on that. I have a Facebook page, Steve Brown Music. Uh, and I guess I, uh, I promote a lot of my music through social media, as, as a lot of area musicians do. Making your way in the world today takes everything you've got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. And they're always glad you came. You want to be where you can't see. Your troubles are all the same. You want to be where everybody knows your name. You want to go where people know. The people are all the same.
I'm here with musician David Schmall of Schmall Music in Columbus, Ohio. How you doing, Dave? Good, thanks. Uh, give me a little background on, on what led you from Boom Chicago in Amsterdam to Amber Ruffin to Das Ambient. I was musical director of Boom Chicago for 12 years. And uh, during a couple of those years, Amber Ruffin was in the cast. So we, that's when we started working together. When she left, we, we just kept working together, writing these funny little songs for projects that she was working on. So fast forward several years, she now has her own show on NBC Peacock and I'm her musical director. So I, I work with her and the writers to write a new song for every episode. And I also composed uh, all the, the theme music and the bumps in and out for commercials and, and so forth. Uh, so, uh, but, but that show, the problem with that show for me is that it's just one thing uh, that a very, very busy person is doing. So there's a lot of downtime while Amber's off doing other things. Uh, and that's when I started uh, the Ambient Project because I just wanted something to do that was my own thing. And plus I, I wanted, there's a specific type of thing that I'm looking for musically uh, that I wasn't getting out of any of my freelance work, uh, which is because I just love this atmospheric ambient kind of thing. Um, you know, I've been interested in it for decades and I, and I first started working on it back in the nineties up till now, it's always just been something that I did, you know, basically just for me, but now, uh, now that the, uh, that the music industry has been completely destroyed by the internet, <laughs> I, the, we were like that in the beginning, you know, <laughs> yeah. that's the bad news. The good news is, is that it, pretty much anybody can, can can compose and produce and and sell music that is of broadcast quality uh, just from their home. And that's that's what I'm doing now. Uh, and also just encourage people to just listen to them with, uh, you know, just put on your headphones, close your eyes and just let your mind create the image. Where, they, where can they hear you? Well, uh, I'm on all of the streaming services as Das Ambient Works. Gotcha. Uh, I'm, a, I'm also on YouTube as Das Ambient and Instagram as Das Ambient.